What's up guys, it's PB. Thanks for tuning in to my latest video, the life of a jobbing plumber. Almost didn't get a video out this week just because I've been mega busy with work, trying to play catch up because next week I'm actually off for the week. I've got to redo my gas qualifications, my ACS. So I've been trying to get all my work done so I've not got people chasing me next week so I can get my head down and get my course done. Um, it's Sunday today, I've just finished work. It's about two half two. So um, just one job this week, it's a combi install I did a couple of weeks back, um, just edited that together, there's a bit of pipe bending in there, a bit of soldering. Um, the job's all in copper and that links me into this week's sponsor, the video is sponsored by Cusp. Cusp is the copper sustainability programme, they're trying to raise the profile of using copper as a material in plumbing because it's 100% recyclable. Um, in fact I went and did a video with them which I'll tag in the description. It's quite interesting, it shows you what happens when they rip scrap copper out of a property, take it to the scrap metal merchants, then it gets recycled. So it's very good for the environment, but as I say, there's a video on that, so check that out, link's in the description. And then at the end of this week's video, the I Fucked Up is gonna be one from me. Honestly, I could probably do one every week with the amount of mistakes I make, but I've got a good one for you this week, and that's at the end of the video. Bit of a strange point to start a start filming a job for you, but I did a YouTube live on this one, so I got a bit carried away. So basically, combi boiler was in here. I'm replacing it today. That's the old flu. That's the feed to the room stat that just goes through the wall there. The fuse spur for the boiler was there. That just ran underneath and connected in. So what I'm doing today, yesterday, sorry, I did the system flush, so I've cleaned it all out and I'm just ready to fit the new boiler. I put the cold water back on last night. There's some uh, mixer taps, so I've capped the hot off as well. The gas is dist the meter. So yeah, today, fit the new boiler, tidy the pipe work up. I was debating whether to, how much to change it. Obviously it's clipped down there, so whether I'm just gonna cut it there and renew this. Uh, new flu, um, yeah, so I will um, I might film parts of this job. I'm probably going to do another YouTube live on it when I start doing the pipe work, but we'll see. Fitting a Baxi 830 combi, that's the one that comes with the magnetic filter in the box, and then a Nest thermostat. So the boiler's on the wall, the flue's out. I've left this, the bottom third of the template on because I'm going to get my laser level now and get my clips on come across what I've decided to do so the gas meter I've moved the cradle because it was on the piss um, I've made that straight there's if you can see that that's the old gas that went to the cooker before they ran the new one out there which is capped off now there is a regulation where you can't leave any open end even on an unused gas pipe just in case someone connects onto it in the future so it has to be capped so i can't just sort of snap that off in the floor and move that back but i didn't want to move that back anyway because what i'm going to do i'm going to put a socket on this gas bring it behind here bend it up t into the gas meter and then that's bang in line with the gas for the boiler so it'll come straight up into the boiler that's neatened that up uh, these two I've cut, they're just out the clips at the minute, that's why they're sticking out a bit. Um, where's the clips? There. So, two sockets on there, probably press fit them straight down. F um, flow up high, space for the hot and cold to come, and then return at the very bottom. And then these two hot and colds I've cut there, I'm just going to probably bring them down um, a little bit further than they were to get them in the middle of what I've just said. One of my favourite things, using the laser level to get my clips, I've just knocked it. So you see I'm right in the middle of the gas union, into my, the hole in the middle there, that's for the clip, and then onto that gas pipe, perfect. So I'm going to get the gas pipe done and then work out what I'm going to do with the rest of the pipes, how I'm going to get over the gas. Um, yeah. I don't very often film myself soldering, but I did for this job, set the camera up, and this is about two minutes worth of soldering, me just doing the gas pipe. I'm not gonna talk over the whole video,
because I am going to do a soldering tutorial specifically for YouTube soon. But this will just give you an idea of my method. Obviously, a brass union there is going to take more heating up than copper pipe would. But normally, I'll heat it up, touch it with a solder. If it doesn't take, then give it a bit more heat. And then I just generally choose a spot where I apply the solder and just slowly watch it fill the gap. Once it's full, then I move on to the next one. I don't have a particular order that I follow. I know a lot of people will say start with the top, start with the bottom, heat rises, all kinds of things. But fittings on copper pipe, it's such a good conductor. The fittings are so close together. I don't think it matters where you start. Just do what's comfortable for you. But I always choose a spot at the back of the fitting where you won't see it, where I apply my solder. And then I just do enough till it fills. So you should see, if you watch this video, you should see my method. So if that's giving you a good idea of the way I do it, you can see the fitting fill in with the solder as I do it. Now, anytime I've done a, a soldering video, people say to me about using a wet rag, you can't, don't use a wet rag before it's cooled. So I intentionally put my hand on the pipe to show you that it was cool enough. I only use the wet rag just to wipe it down, get any flux off before I then buff it up with steel wool. And that's all I do, fine grade steel wool. You can see that it makes the pipe look really good. I don't ever use Brasso. I tried it once just as an experiment. Don't like it. I don't like the pipes being that shiny, just clean. Um, and steel wool is, is good enough for me for that. The main thing is just to get all the flux off and just leave it clean really. Right now I've got the flow done and now I'm gonna do the hot and the cold. Now the hot has got to come down, bend, bend around the back and then bend up into this one and the cold has got to come step over the gas bend round and bend up so what I might do is I'll try and film how I do the cold because that's probably the trickiest and then yeah we'll see how we get on right so this is the stage I'm at now so I'm going to bend my cold pipe which is this bottom one here so I've got my two off cuts in to give me my distances the distance between this and this pipe is the same as this and this pipe. So I'm going to use this as a measurement because I've not got a clip here. Um, so basically what I want to do is a half step over to get me around there, elbow up into that and then bend around here and then bend up. So I'm going to try and do it all in one go and film it if possible. So we'll start with the most difficult bend, which is this one. So we're going to pull that first. So the first thing I need to do is I've got my distance between here and here but add on a bit to allow for the bends. So from that pipe there to the center of that one, we're looking at about 560. So I'm gonna give myself probably 600 just to allow for the distance of the bend. This is my first bend. Obviously this is real life, so we don't wanna do it and get it wrong and have to waste the whole length of pipe. So my first bend here, which is going over the gas pipe, I'm gonna make it slightly longer than what I need because then I can always cut some off. If I try and do it exact and get it wrong, then I've ruined the whole thing. So I'm gonna make my first bend now, which I'm gonna do about 60 degrees. So that's the first bend done. Um, I'm pretty sure that's about 60 degrees, but I might be wrong. I do this all by eye. This bit's quite difficult to explain, but if we offer a spare piece of copper on like that, we can see the void we've created because that's where we're jumping over the gas pipe. Now the next bend we make, the distance, depends on how the distance here you want. So let me just grab a bit, an old bit of 22. So if I put that under there. So that's the gas pipe we're going over. So it all depends on how much gap you want going over that pipe as to how tight you do it. If this was an inch and a half waste pipe, you'd move it that way to make this bigger. 
and if it was smaller, 15 mil, you'd bring it this way to make it smaller. You can only go as far though as this will allow you. You can't go too close. So the other thing that might be worth mentioning, you might be able to see it clear in your head, is you put an elbow on and offer it on. You can see there where the pipe is gonna go up and you can cut or mark. So that was the center of the pipe, but when we put a fitting on, like that see that's the center but we need to cut it further back you can just play around and use your tape measure it's hard for me to do this with one hand but basically once you've done that first bend you can then move it closer or further away to make that bigger see that's now a really big gap there for something like a waste pipe so i'm going to set that up for a 22 mil gas pipe and I'm going to pull this bend. Right, so that's my bend I've pulled. Now, if we offer this piece of copper on in line, like that, you can see there we've stepped over our gas pipe and then the elbow there, the center line there is what I needed it to be to have my gas pipe, which is 65 mil center. See what, 65 mil right in the middle of this bend. And I did that just by offering this in and measuring it. So now if I offer this elbow on to the center of that line looking up, I just need to cut that about there. See that it gives us our center there. It's really hard to explain, or maybe I'm not explaining it right, or maybe it sounds more complicated in my head. I'm just gonna cut that off. So that's on like that, and that should line up perfectly. There we go. So there's our bend going up over the gas pipe there, and then our bend that comes this way is 53 and a half from the center of the cold where it goes up. So now I need to pull a 90 on there. So my next bend is gonna go this way and it's measured from the center of this pipe where it comes up, which is that line there, but that's to the inside edge. So offering in, so that's when you wouldn't use the, the 70 mil from there because you'd be wrong. So I just like to offer it in. So there's my inside edge. So now that's another 90 bend, I'll do that now. So my next measurement comes from here. We just bent this 90, but we need the distance from here to this inside pipe, this one here. There's a centre line to do one last 90 bend, make sure it all looks like it's lined up. Just tweaking a bit, well, in fact, if I hold the bender up straight, it helps. Okay, so that's the last bend. So what we should have now is that. Oh, it's gone off for it in. So that's the pipe in situ. So I've got the first bend, second bend, step over, and then up into the cold. So there's our center of the gas pipe. That's in line with that. I'll bend in the corner there, behind there, and then up to join onto that there. Hopefully explained in a way that you can understand. So you'll notice on the cold inlet to the boiler, I've fitted a mini expansion vessel. I thought some of you might find this interesting. So this is the boiler I fitted, back C830 Combi, and inside the instruction manual, hidden away, in this sort of guide about, you know, the stuff that we don't normally read is this section here, which says important. In instances where the mains water supply incorporates a non-return backflow prevention device or any other device that includes one. Now, what you'll find is if your property has got a water meter, that will include a non-return valve. So backflow prevention in a water meter. So if your property has got a water meter, um, it's possible for a build-up of pressure to occur. This may result in damage to the boiler and other appliances. To prevent damage to the boiler, it's strongly recommended that a suitable mini expansion vessel is fitted on the mains inlet between the boiler and the non-return valve device. So between your water meter, which is at the stopcock, and the boiler, you fit a mini expansion vessel. And it does say here, even in circumstances where a non-return device is not fitted, so let's say your property's not got a water meter, any future modifications to the mains inlet, e.g. fitting a water meter, 
should be considered an expansion vessel fitted. So basically, long and short of it, fit them in the expansion vessel when you fit in a back sea, because if it's got a water meter, it needs one. And if it's ever going to have a water meter, it needs one. So that's why you fit one. All right, so here's another simplified drawing of a combi boiler. So this is our cold mains coming in, into the boiler, obviously goes through the boiler, picks up the heat and comes out to the hot tap. Now, we know when water gets heated, the pressure increases. So imagine you run your hot tap and it's, let's say that this boiler's in a one bedroom flat. So we've got maybe kitchen sink, bathroom basin and a bath tap, but quite close to the boiler. So not much pipe work here. The boiler's in the kitchen, stop taps under the kitchen sink. So not much pipe work here. So we're running this tap and it's getting hot. We're getting 50, 55 degrees. And then you stop the tap. And at that point, you've got in here hot water that isn't just going to cool down straight away because the boiler's only just gone off. So it's probably going to get slightly hotter. And the water pressure has increased. Now, what it can do is it can expand inside this pipe and inside this cold pipe. And also because we've just got a stopcock, which hasn't got a non-return valve in, it can carry on expanding through the other side. So into this sort of, say into the street. So it's got all that pipe work there to use for expansion. Now, if we imagine they have a water meter fitted just here, which has got a non-return valve in. So now we can't use this for expansion. We can only use this. So we've shortened the length of the pipe. We run the hot tap, the hot water gets hot. We shut it off and then we can only use this pipe and as far back as here where it stops for expansion. Now, if that's not enough, the pressure gets too great, it might damage component parts in the boiler because of the increased pressure. So that's when we fit a mini shock arrestor on the cold there. So that is between this non-return valve on our water meter and the boiler. So when we run the hot tap, shut it, the pressure increases, your mini shock arrestor or your mini expansion vessel takes up that expansion. So almost finished now, just doing the wiring. And because there's nowhere for me to take a condense to drain, I've got to put condense pump in and this pumps up and into the bathroom, connects in the bathroom. So if you've never wired one of these up before, I was just going to talk through the wiring now. I've got a Wago wiring centre there. Normally you wouldn't have this much wiring for a combi, but because it's got the Nest thermostat and the condense pump, there's quite a lot of wires going on, so I thought this would make it easier. I'll probably show you on a piece of paper how this works, but basically, this is our permanent live, and this is our live to the boiler. Now, if the condense pump wasn't in, this live here would connect in there and the boiler would have power, but we've bypassed it. So, the brown wire there, that's the permanent live, which should be going to the boiler, goes down into that float switch. If the float switch says everything's okay, the power comes back up the blue, and that's when it goes to the boiler, so that the boiler can operate. So here's my very basic diagram of a condensate pump. So this is the pump here, it's got a permanent live neutral and earth, and that live goes through this high level safety switch. And then from that, it goes out to the boiler. So basically, when the boiler's condensing, it will fill up this pump. When the water level gets to a certain level where the float is, that float will hit a micro switch. Okay. I found this on the web for basically when the boiler is condensing, it will fill up this pump when the water level gets to a certain level where the float is. Check it out. What the fuck, Siri? Anyway, when the water gets to this level, this float will lift up, activate a micro switch, and that puts power onto the pump, and then the pump clears all this water and it goes down. And that's how it works. If this failed, let's say the float got stuck or the micro switch failed, the water would obviously get higher and higher. And when it got to the, the level of the safety cutout up here, that would basically break that circuit. So now the live wouldn't go up to the boiler which means the boiler couldn't carry on operating, condensing, because if it did, this would fill up higher and higher until it flooded over the top. So it's basically just interrupts the live feed into the boiler, so the boiler can't get power unless everything's okay with the condensate pump. 
that's pretty much it. I think it's worth saying, if you're struggling to discharge your condensate, then you're possibly going to be struggling to discharge your PRV as well. So if you choose a pump that's suitable for PRV discharge, and I think what makes it suitable is the temperature range. So this one can do up to 90 degrees for five minutes. Then you can use it for both. That's the job finished. Wasn't mad keen on the finish of this one. Overall, how it looks, there's something about it I don't like. But at the end of the day, it's only a combi swap, so it doesn't really matter. That's it. And it's got a lovely Nest thermostat. Which I love fitting these and they're great for upselling to customers like cameras, smoke alarms, um, doorbell, stuff like that. My name's PB and I fucked up. So amongst all of the many mistakes I've made in my career, and I probably made at least two last week, one of the worst ones was when I was sight bashing and every Easter and summer when the students went away, he'd choose probably two or three of them and a big gang of us would go in, strip them back to brick and then redo them. Every room would have an ensuite, shower room and it normally stick to the same plan. So it was good because it was good crack, a lot of lads there, good banter, but the work was very repetitive. So this happened on one of the first jobs I did for them. I was ripping out to put the first fixed pipes in for one of the ensuites and my floorboard saw hit a pipe as I was cutting the floorboards. Now there was an electrician in there and a plaster at the time and they both started taking the piss and oh he's hit a pipe, he's done this. So because I was young and because I didn't want to look stupid, I kind of styled it out, said yeah it's fine, it's coming out anyway. Whatever, I didn't, didn't do anything with it, I didn't fix it there and then, I just said it's fine, it doesn't matter. And then I forgot about it. And it sounds really bad but yeah, I completely forgot about it. And then about three weeks after we'd finished the job, I was going on holiday the next day, and for some reason I remembered it, and I thought, fuck, that pipe. So I rang the site gaffer, got the key off him, I made some excuse up, said, oh, I did something, I just want to check, or I left a bit of kit there, I can't remember exactly what I said. But I went back to it, and obviously it was finished, so there was lino down, there was ply, I had to take all that up. The, the wash and basin was in a vanity unit, that was sitting right over the top of where this pipe was. So it took me about three hours to get it all out. And when I found it, I looked at it and there was literally a millimetre, if that left of copper, where it almost gone through. And that was live gas pipe. So it could have filled the floor with gas, exploded, killed someone. It could have been really bad. All because I didn't want to admit to making it a mistake and just fixing it there and then. So that is probably one of the worst things I've ever done. I've done a lot of stupid mistakes, but yeah, ignoring something like that just because of bravado, not wanting to look silly. I should have just held my hands up, which I would do now. Now I'm older, I would say, yeah, I've hit a gas pipe. I'll fix it, my bad. But yeah, it's probably the worst thing I've ever done. I still think about it to this day. So lesson, the moral of the story is, if you make a mistake, just hold your hands up, Everyone makes mistakes, that's how we learn, and just say, yeah, I've done this, and get it fixed. Because it will only, it's not gonna get better, is it? It's only gonna get worse.